Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. As expected, a little bit of snow accumulation up there across the Wasatch with this, this minor windy front. Looks like one to maybe one and a half inches so far. You might add just a little bit more, uh, but that's the view up there at Alta Ski Area in Little Cottonwood Canyon this morning. Here's radar, and uh, you can see, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a small wave of moisture, and there's a lot of wind with this bending the pressure gradient, but... A little bit of snow there over the Wasatch, the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, a little bit of snow up here into Idaho, Montana, the next batch uh, loading up there in the Pacific Northwest. Let's zoom in uh, to Utah and really on the last gasp, you can still see a little bit of blue there running up over the range and then kind of headed into the Wind Rivers. A little bit of precip up there into Idaho and uh, Wyoming. Again, not a big front. A minor one. There is another one coming for tomorrow. Uh, let me show you water vapor satellite imagery here this morning. So um, the moisture in the mid-levels here in the whites, the blues, and if there were some green showing up, dry airs in the blacks, the oranges and the reds, and you can see this flow right here with the jet shooting in from the west. Area of low pressure right there, everything kind of rotating around it, and that's what sent. There's your wave that's kind of cruising through the inner mountain right now. That will brush the central and northern mountains of Colorado just a little bit um, today, tonight, and then the next front, which is loading up right here, will come in right behind it uh, for tomorrow. So that's how things play out. Here's my, uh, my bullet points and what I'm expecting here. So two windy fronts, one today, one tomorrow. Then we're going to get into this big western area of high pressure, big ridge of high pressure will build into the west it means warmer and drier than normal now on the flip side and I, I posted a whole video about this yesterday afternoon there's going to be a, uh, a deep area of low pressure probably four standard deviations below the 20-year norm across a lot of the midwest the great lakes and even the deep south um, uh, across the east and we're looking at potential record low temperatures in a lot of cities. It could be in the 20s in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we could have snow in Tennessee, in Nashville, in Kentucky, in West Virginia. We, we could have 30s in parts of Florida. So check that video out. Still very applicable even this morning. Uh, best odds of snow, Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior B.C. So for example, here's how you read this. A little bit of snow this morning in, uh, in Utah, a little bit tomorrow, tiny bit, and then a better shot, 11-16, 11-19, after we get through this big western high pressure. I think once we get through the big high pressure, then we're looking at a more active period, but that is a big waiting game till like 11-13 and beyond at this point. Drilling down on this just a little bit. A few uh, areas, snow forecast. Alta, less than an inch coming tomorrow. Two inches on the 16th, a foot on the 17th, two on the 18th, four on the 19th. So you can kind of see how that plays out. Uh, not a lot for Colorado. There's snow mass. Now, it's a waiting game because here comes that more active period, 11, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, Jackson Hole, three today, three tomorrow, three there in that period, then a foot after that. I won't go through all these, but uh, Mount Begbie up there in B.C., interior B.C., near Revelstoke. you got four coming um, next 24 hours. And there's one, and then a big 18, 13 through 17, once we get that, that rich flow. All right, looking at the, the forecast radar here, we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Thursday, November 6th. Now, at lunchtime, there's our wave or our front uh, snow is really uh, has come to an end at that point in Utah. A little bit left over there in Wyoming and a little bit nicking the central and northern mountains of Colorado. There's your next front hitting the west coast. <clears throat> All right, moving this ahead. There's the dinner hour. All right, now look what happens here. This is early. It's probably 5 a.m. on Friday. Here comes the next front right here. New snow for Utah, the Tetons, Montana, and eventually this will slip and kind of brush the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Move this ahead. All right, so there's lunch. There's your dinner hour, and look at that little bit of snow there. Just quickly brushing the central and northern mountains of Colorado. 
and then it begins to move away. <clears throat> Here we are early um, on Saturday. There's the, the lunch hour on Saturday, and now we're into this big high pressure across the West. We'll end it right here, and this is early on Sunday. This is probably 5 a.m. on Sunday. What do you got? Giant high pressure. All the action's over here across the east with that big dip in the jet. Big uh, area of low pressure. So with these little fronts coming through, here's the time height forecast for Loveland Ski Area. Next three days. You start down here, that's the current time, and you move in this direction. That takes you into the future. So it's totally counterintuitive. But you can see the two waves, one there, the two fronts, and right there. So there's a little bit of snow in the Loveland ski area forecast for this afternoon, tonight, overnight. And then the second front is basically tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night into the overnight. And these might be an inch. They, they, they're more than likely under an inch, but there's two little areas in, in green. And there's two pressure ridges with windy conditions when these fronts come through right there and right there. So winds based on this could be blowing 50, 50 miles per hour or stronger above tree line up around Loveland ski area with those two fronts. Looking at the atmospheric pressure anomalies, so this is effective today. Um, there's our front, there's the next one. So you're looking for highs or lows essentially. Here's tomorrow, it's 11.7. There's the next front rolling through, and look what's happening. Big polar vortex up here, starting to spin. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a merger between these two areas, and that's going to throw a big area of low pressure down, and that's what's going to generate this. This is really something. Um, so this is Monday, 1110. Uh, big area of high pressure. But this steals the show right here. This, this dip in the jet and this serious drop in pressures. Again, this is probably four standard deviations below the 20-year norm. You can see those pinks, those hot pinks. That's way down here, almost off the scale. And what you're going to find uh, near record lows, probably record low temperatures, and even snow, again, all the way down into the mid-Atlantic with this, and there's gonna, be, there's gonna be some lake effect snow. And the irony is some of these places will get snow in the mid-Atlantic before Denver. Uh, it's been over 200 days since we've seen snow. We haven't even had our first snow in Denver yet. The final map is after the, the thing flips. So after that big Eastern low, then the pattern starts to shift and look what we've got. Big drop in pressures here. That's pretty significant. This is 1117. So after we get through that, that big area high pressure, then the pattern probably flips. And this would represent colder conditions and more widespread snow. So that's what's coming. And with it, you can see it. This is the uh, integrated vapor transport. This is how we kind of spot uh, atmospheric rivers. This is effective central California coast. Notice it's very quiet. And here's your high pressure right here. But look at the little uptick right here, kind of a weak push with a storm system, and that's the pattern change. This is 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, so somewhere right in there, the pattern along the, uh, the California coast, west coast, starts to flip. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. All right, here we go. This is the, uh, the total precip, five days out, only five days. And you can see the axis here. It's right here. The heaviest precip is all north of that axis, north of that essential storm track. Some heavy precip up here in the Pacific Northwest, northern Idaho, and across parts of Wyoming. Again, that's only five days out, as if everything fell as snow. Um, here's the five-day snow forecast, 10 to 1 ratio. And you can see the axis right here. Most of it's up here in the northern Rockies, Wyoming north. <laughs> Barely anything down here across uh, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. Essentially nothing. So it's a very quiet five-day stretch there. Now, that's the five-day snow. Let me show you this. It's pretty dramatic. dramatic. Now, this is the 10-day. Look at the difference. Huge difference. So there's a lot of snow, according to this, that accumulates beyond five days. The, that 
that uh, that big area of high pressure that sets up across the west is a killer. It's an absolute killer. It's high, it's dry, it's warm, and it's snowless during that high pressure. But once we flip the pattern after that high pressure, this is what you get. Anywhere you see the, the dark purple, that's over six inches. Anywhere you see these whites, that's generally two feet or more. Look at that. There are a lot of areas beyond five days that turn extremely active, colder, and heavier snow. Dramatic shift. Um, here's what that looks like. Here's the 10-day snow forecast across Wyoming. Two feet right there. 6 to 12 in all of these bright purples, even in Colorado. Um, look at the, the Wasatch, 1 to 2 feet of accumulation. Again, most of this falls beyond 5 days. Let's take a trip into Colorado. Again, nothing for the first 5 days, and then all of this falls beyond 5 days. Over a foot, over a foot, over a foot teeny tiny bit, maybe a trace in Denver. So we'll see if this holds, but this is definitely an indicator that beyond five days, once we get through that massive high pressure, things shift. What about the east? Look at this right there, Monday, Tuesday of next week. Look at that cold air that rotates in and snow across Ohio, Michigan, lake effect snow off Lake Michigan. Look at that. Lake effect snow off of Lake Erie. Into Cleveland could see six inches or more. Detroit's right on the line. Snow all the way down into Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, according to this. How's this play out? Mount Washington, up in New Hampshire, 15 inches on the ensemble mean by November 21st. So we're looking at good conditions developing for the Northeast, especially beyond November 10th. Go down the, let's go up the street. Jay Peaks actually got more. 16 here on the ensemble mean by November 21st. Conditions get uh, especially good as things ramp up beyond the 10th. Uh, let's go back out west. Jackson, Wyoming. Decent accumulation, 14. And the biggest ramp comes right here after about the 13th, 14th. So beyond that high pressure area that we've talked about exhaustively now. Here's Berthoud Pass, really sad through about the 14th. It's all high pressure, very little, high and dry. Then we start to see a little increase here. Um, that's that period. Once we get through the high pressure, things could turn more active. Let me see if I got anything else. That's it. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. A lot to talk about here with the pattern flipping and then coming back um, beyond that high pressure. So Thank you for tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.